Good evening, Miss uh, Earthlings. I am uh, figure I'll make another video. I think I'll make one about uh, the terminal right now. Um, using your terminal, getting it, because, you know, the easiest way, and I recommend this, I think uh, Kubuntu is the best Linux operating system for new people that are just new to Linux, because it's almost like Windows, you know, it's a, it looks like Windows and acts like Windows, but it's Linux. And um, so you have a desktop, like, I like KDE, and, uh, or you could also have GNOME, which is another desktop, you know, and, you know, and they're beautiful, you know, graphical desktops. The, the other option is to use uh, tiling window managers. And I don't really know that much about them. I've never really used one. I mean, I've used the the tiling window manager for uh, uh, the System76 Pop OS operating system has a window tiling window manager option on it, and I've used that. I don't really like tiling window managers. You know, it's okay, but. I, I I like being able to move my windows around and overlap and I can click the one I want to work on and I, I like the desktop. I like uh, Kubuntu is my favorite and, and GNOME is pretty good. The, I, my main complaint about GNOME is the the they have a really obnoxious user agreement that I don't agree with. So, you know, because I thought about just because of System76, I thought about going with GNOME, but because of that user agreement, I'm kind of like, no, I, I don't agree with that. I like, uh, you know, the, the I, I really like uh, contact, K-O-N-T-A-C-T, -T, is the uh, default, you know, K, K Ubuntu, the KDE terminal. And it works really good, and it works just fine. You know, the, I, I recently I kind of moved away from using that because uh, Kitty came out. What was the other one? There was the one I've been using lately is Kitty, but there's another one, Alacrity, that are really super fast. They run on the GPU instead of the CPU, and so they're really, really very fast compared to older ones. And I, I noticed it right away when the first time I ever installed the Lacrity and I was installing Vim and you gotta install the plugins to Vim. And normally it goes pretty fast. It goes like dink, 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 you know, and it takes about, you know, three seconds to load all your 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 uh, plugins. Well, in a Lacrity when I did that, it just went and they were done that fast. And it was like, whoa, that was, that was something. And that's the only thing difference I've noticed, you know. But, so it's a lot faster and, you know, I don't really use the thing that much anyway, but that could come in really handy if you were like, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, compiling a, a huge program, you know, that, it, that speed can come in really handy. So, um, you know, I, I use the one thing I, that so that's your terminal, you know, you can use like I said, contact works f pretty good. I, I mean, I used it for years. Ever since I've been using Linux, I've been using contact. And then just recently, I kind of switched to, I used Alacrity first, and that was really super fast. And then I started using Kitty. And I, you know, and I tried to, I just been using that. That's what I've been using. I don't know if it's better, or which one's better, Alacrity or Kitty, but they both run on the GPU. And so the the shell that I like using is Z shell, and you know, the, Bash is the default shell for Linux, and it works fine. It's you know, when I first started using Linux, it, you know, I, Z shell, you know, said, but well, Z shell does everything Bash does, and then some, and so. I started using Z shell and I've been using that ever since I've been using Linux. So I use that. Vim is the text editor, you know, the, and there's a kind of debate between Emacs and Vim and I just gravitated straight to Vim and I've been using it ever since. And I don't, I'm not really a 
very, you know, professional Vim programmer or, you know, user. But I do use it every once in a while. Mostly, the most I do, man, I set up Z Shell and Vim and Tmux. And I create this, like, little homemade, uh, what do you call it, environment, uh, local development environment using Vim, using, I, I used to use console, now I use Kitty and Z Shell and Vim and Tmux and I can set it up and it runs really well and it takes a long time and I spend way too much time just working on that and getting that all set up and it's beautiful and very powerful and very fast and then I've never really done much with it you know because I just don't know I don't know any programming languages I've been studying C I'm trying to learn C and because that's Linux is written in C and so I figure that's the first language I want to learn and you know, and, and Python is another one, and and Q, KDE is written in QML, so and C plus plus. So you, I got a, you know, that's four languages right there, and that doesn't even start to be the the, the website is a whole another set of languages. So Git is your your uh, you know your repository where you can create a record of everything you do, so you don't lose, you know, you keep track of everything you do and you can, uh, you know, you just save everything. Everything is backed up and, and you can go back. Like if you mess something up, you can go back to a previous setting, you know, time and, and re restart everything from there. You can all go back and look at what, the, what they call that Git repository it's just a you keep a record of everything you do all the changes of a, in a program that you do you know with the i use uh nerd tree and vim i also use uh what is it uh there's one there's a file file uh file manager and there's a couple different ones. The one I use is, uh, anyway, there, there's one that kind of works really well with Vim. You know, I can't remember the names of them right off the top of my head right now. So I'll think about, it. you know, maybe I'll, I'll make more videos like this anyway. So the SSH is the way that you, you have to get the keys. And, and the key is like a, the code, the you know, like it's a, the size, of, it's the length of a paragraph, and it's just a random code that the computer generates, and those are the keys. And you get, you have a, your local key, and you have your remote key, and when you set up, like for example, your website, you set up a, a key, you know, a remote key on that web on the server where your website is, and you. And, and it's that key is connected to the local key that you keep on your computer. And when you, so when you make an SSH connection, you can, uh, the two will recognize each other, those keys, you know. The public, there's the public and the private key, that's what it is. It's a, the public key and, and the private key. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's one of the little, SSH is one of the more complicated things. You know, get an SHH, SSH, or kind of where you're starting to get into the networking, where you're, you're not only working with your own computer. Because the Git repository, like you could have a Git repository on GitHub that anybody that has a password to it can log into it and change, make changes, and do whatever they need to do in there. And so you can have whole teams of people working on one program. And, it, and it's designed so that, you know, if somebody over in this place makes a change and then somebody over in this place makes a change, it, it's, you know, there's systems that make it so that you can put them all together into the, the one main program you know as it goes along you take out branches and then you merge the branches back into the main terminal 
the containerization, the, the way I've learned so, so far Linux, the best I can understand, there's two main tools for containerization. One is Kimu or Q-E-M-U, and which is spelled Q-E-M-U, and that that's kind of like uh, it's like you could run a whole entire operating system in there. You know, and it's a, what do they call that? Virtual machine where you can, like virtual box. It's a, the Linux, ver, you know, virtual box is actually a commercial version of Kimu. And then uh, LXD, there's, there's, what is it? LXC and LXD. LXC is this container program, which the commercial version of that is Docker. And LXD is a front end, like a graphical, uh, you know, dashboard for running LXC. And LXC is the program where you can create these containers and put, like, say, for example, you could put a website in the container. And you could actually even put each different piece of the website in a different container, like the, the database and all this, different parts of it in a, into a container and run it on your run that from your computer and it would stay it would operate and use the resources of your computer but it would be isolated from your computer so that if the the website crashed it wouldn't damage the computer in any way you know and people can't wouldn't be able to get into your computer through the website and things like that so you set up all this stuff and you got it. It's a kind of complicated stuff. Your integrated development is your, you could use, I, I kind of, everybody uses VS code and it's the easiest, fastest, best one in the world, Microsoft Virtual Studio Code. But I, the one that I really like and recommend is KDevelop and Qt Creator. Because that's the, it's staying in the KDE, you know, system because it's all optimized for KDE, and it works really well. They work just fine. They do pretty much anything. Visual Visual, Visual Studio Code probably has more, you know, options and everything. You know, just because it's Visual Studio Code, it's Microsoft. You know, they got the everything, but. <coughs> KDevelop and learning how to use the KDevelop project tools and use that whole set of tools is a good idea. Another one of the tools that I use a lot, in fact, I probably use it more than any of these that I've just mentioned, is uh, Dolphin, which is the file manager. And lately I started, I switched over to using this one called Crusader. And, that, and the only real difference between Dolphin and Crusader is Crusader has a whole bunch more buttons. And I don't know anything about what those buttons do, and I never use any of them. But, you know, I just, I like all that, you know, more options and stuff like that. And I like bells and whistles. And so I know a lot of computer users, they want to minimize everything. They, want, they don't want any buttons at all. Those are the gnome guys, you know, they don't even like KDE because it's got too many buttons, you know. But I like buttons, and so I like, I've been using Crusader, and it's pretty much, I haven't really noticed any big difference between, you know, that and that. And, and I would eventually like to learn what those little buttons do and, and be able to use them to make my local development environment, you know, create a local development environment where you create a, little folder for your websites and a folder for your pr other projects. Like, for example, I want to make a, a calendar with 19 days, you know, 19 day, you know, 19, 19 day months, you know, the Baha'i calendar and, and, tr and, and create one that will run on my desktop natively It'll run on it make one for the phone, you know, and use these tools to make it make something like that and I would have that folder for projects like that or any other applications like that that I want to make and um, get in there and do that and make uh, you know make things you know create things and uh, 
and you and you organize them in each one you would create a you know I don't think you really need to make a container unless you're going to actually run your your website from your computer then you need a container but uh, you know other other than that you just need so you would create a folder and the first thing you would want to do in there is create a git repository and then you would just you know git uh, then you would uh, install like Python or, or you would install like, uh, what is it, uh, my favorite, you know, I've never built a website with this, but it's Python uh, Flask. So you would git install Flask in that you build a container with Python, you build a container. It's, we're using what is the name of that program? You, you build a little container that's part of Python. And then inside that container, you create, you would, you create, uh, you would create your, your Git repository. And then you would get, get install, you would install um, Flask in there. And then you would just build your website from there. And, you know, and it's complicated. You know, and I, I'm kind of right on the verge of being able to do this myself, but I'm not right there. I'm not there yet. You know, mostly I the, this website I got, I've, I use uh, WordPress. It's easy. I just, you know, I followed the Bluehost way and, you know, I, I use, and installed WordPress and I and use a, uh, a, a, uh, a theme, you know, and I just used a theme and I kind of made a few minor edits to the theme, you know, to get to get the little, you know, titles to come out, to, or out to the left instead of the right, because when I first installed it, they would go off the edge of the page. And so I had to switch it over to the left. I was that was pretty cool that I could actually I, I figured that out all by myself, man, that's pretty cool. And, uh, but there's a lot more, you know, and being able to, I would really like to, to be able to build a website using Flask and maybe and probably Django build a big, my big news web, my one world news website using Django. And, uh, you know, and that's what I'm doing. It's fun. It's interesting. It's complicated. It's complex. It's. You know, it's, it's, it's like, you know, like a jigsaw puzzle, except every piece of the puzzle is a complicated puzzle and, uh, it's fun. And I like things like this. That's what I like to do. And I gotta, you know, not get too distracted by all the different things I got going on in my life. My job, I got this full-time job, which is a good thing because I need the money. Hopefully one day I'll be able to make enough money with this website to, you know that I don't need to have a job. But for in the you know in the meantime, I got a job. If you like what I'm, the education that I'm offering here, and I'm offering it for free because I'm kind of reaching out to the poor people that don't have anything to start with, and and helping as many people as I can. But if you like what I have to say, you know, and if this helps you in some way, please don't donate. Buy my book and read it. I, I there's, If you read the stories on this website and, and watch all the videos on this website for free, it will change your life. It will improve your life. If you read the book, Holistic Home Office, it's a, it's a very holistic education. And... Uh, you know, and so contribute, you know, try to, you know, I, I got to, I want to do this. This is what I want to do. I've been wanting to do this my whole life, man. I'm a teacher, storyteller. I'm a shaman. You know, a shaman is a storyteller, and, and that's, that's me. And uh, I try to help people, you know. So thanks a lot for watching, and uh, peace be with you.